Dear Michelle, stop worrying so much about getting things wrong. Success has nothing to do with perfection. So stop being nervous, raise your hand, use your voice, get it wrong, learn from your mistakes, and keep moving on. And don't worry about what other people think. It doesn't matter. Be brave, use your voice, ignore the doubters, and work hard because life is hard work. Don't be afraid of it. So many of us go through life with our stories hidden, feeling ashamed or afraid when our whole truth doesn't live up to some established ideal. We grow up with messages that tell us that there is only one way to be American, that if our skin is dark or our hips are wide, if we don't experience love in a particular way, if we speak another language or come from another country, then we don't belong. That is, until someone dares to start telling that story differently. I grew up with a disabled dad in a too small house with not much money in a starting to fail neighborhood. And I also grew up surrounded by love and music in a diverse city in a country where an education can take you far. I had nothing or I had everything. It depends on which way you want to tell it. My father, Frazier, taught me to work hard, laugh often, and keep my word. My mother, Marion, showed me how to think for myself and to use my voice. Together, in our cramped apartment on the south side of Chicago, they helped me see the value in our story, in my story, in the larger story of our country. Even when it's not pretty or perfect, even when it's more real than you want it to be, your story is what you have, what you will always have. It's something to own. eight years in the White House is the least of my story. You know, it, it, it doesn't really explain anything. So I felt like I had to give people the context of my life. I had to introduce them to that little girl, Michelle Robinson, and give them a sense of what the sights and sounds of that little girl's life was like, how she played, how she was loved, you know, who she interacted with, some of her hardships, some of her failings. Because I really do think that that's how we get to know people. Mm -hmm. you know, too often, we focus on what I call our stats. What school did you go to? Where did, you know, how, what, what's your occupation? But the truth is to really get to know people, we have to go deep into those stories. And I, and I felt that if I wanted people to get to know me, I had to share everything. So that was part of the thinking, and that's really the way I've lived my life. Um, I learned that on the campaign trail in Iowa when I had to explain myself to uh, predominantly white communities who hadn't been exposed to black folks, let alone tall black people named Obama. So I had to find out how to open myself up in a way that people could connect with me and then be able to hear me. So this book is really just an extension of that belief that we have to share those stories with each other if we're really gonna break down the barriers. I think about my daughters uh, because quite frankly, all these girls, these are our girls. And I think about where I would be in my life if I didn't work hard in school and have the opportunity to go to college and then on to law school, I wouldn't be here. Uh, so I think it's imperative 
And it is part of my passion and my mission to make sure that every girl on the planet has the same opportunity that I've had, that my daughters have. Um, and I want to make sure that all of you here in the United States are taking advantage of the opportunities that you have as well. I want you to be that hungry to get your education because it is going to be the key to your future. As you all know, the harder you work in your classes this year, the more opportunities you'll have to go to college and get the education you need to be who you want to be and build the life you want to live. And that matters not just for your future, but for the future of our country and our world. The fact is, we need you. We need you out there fighting injustices and curing diseases. We need you building businesses, leading communities, and preparing the next generation of kids for the challenges they'll face. And to do all that, you're gonna need the best education possible. So today, I'm asking you to commit to continuing your education past high school. Every single one of you has something to offer, something that only you can bring to this world. And I can't wait to see what you all achieve in the months and years ahead. For me, a, a black woman from a working class background, to have the opportunity to tell her story is interestingly rare. You know, I think that's why some people ask the question, how did you become here? How did you go from here to there? It's sort of like people think I'm a unicorn. It's like, like I don't exist. Like people like me don't exist. And I know that there are so many people in this country, in this world, who feel like they don't exist because their stories aren't told, or they think their stories aren't worthy of being told. You know, in this country, we've gotten to the point where we kind of think that there is only a handful of legitimate stories that make you a true American. And so if you don't fall into that narrow sort of line, um, it's like you don't belong, but we all belong. And I think my book is just, it's the ordinariness of a very extraordinary story. Um, and, and I hope that by telling it, that it, it makes others, not just black women, not just black people, but other people, other women people who feel faceless and invisible and voiceless to feel the pride in their story in the way that I feel about mine the ordinariness of growing up as a working class kid with two parents who had values, they didn't have a lot of money. You know, I, we grew up with music and art and love and that was just about it. And we were encouraged to get an education. You know, I am not a unicorn. <laughs> there are millions of kids like me out there. And it's just a shame that sometimes people will see me and they will only see my color and then they'll make certain judgments about that. And that's dangerous for us to dehumanize each other in that way. We are all just people, you know, with stories to tell. If you like what you hear at The Black Experience, please consider clicking on the join button to support our nonprofit. I'm Adam P. Kennedy. Thank you for joining us. This is the Black Experience for all.